The Eiffel Protocol provides a set of events designed to represent test execution in various forms. Not the tests themselves, but their execution. An important distinction. To fully appreciate the test events and how they interact, a little bit of context is required. Eiffel is designed to accommodate a wide variety of processes and technologies, but it is opinionated in the sense that it strives to encourage good practice. So let's talk about what Eiffel considers to be good test execution practice and how the event syntax is designed to support that. The most fundamental entity is the test case. Nomenclature in the industry in the testing area is rather confused, but Eiffel uses test case for the smallest atomic executable piece of a test. It may be automated or manual, it doesn't really matter. The execution of a test case is represented by four types of events. Test case triggered, test case started, test case finished, and test case cancelled. Analogous to the four event types used to represent activity executions. Note that activity executions are a separate concept. An activity execution can wrap test executions as well as other things like software builds, analytics, document generation, publishing, deployment, what have you. Test case triggered means that the criteria for executing the test case have been met, which could mean that someone simply pushed the button, or that a new artifact version has been published, or that an artifact has achieved a certain confidence level due to other activities in the pipeline. Test case started signals that the execution has actually started, with any time delta between the two implying some delay, for example due to queuing. Test case finished is sent when the execution is complete and reports the outcome. Test case cancelled, on the other hand, is used when the triggered test case execution was halted before it could begin and can also report the reason for cancelling. Two significant link types are IUT, as in item under test, and environment. These signify what is being tested and where it is tested both important pieces of information. The environment particularly so in a highly variable context, where software is deployed not in a single configuration on a single target, but needs to be verified across a range of variants. The fact that a test has been executed does not necessarily translate into the verification of a particular requirement, however. Requirements or other issues Again, Eiffel tries to stay agnostic and simply uses the term issue to represent requirements, bug reports, features, work items, user stories, and so on. Issues can map one to many or many to one to tests. Consequently, issue verified is a separate event type. It uses the same two link types, IUT and environment, to indicate in which software and in what environment the issue has been verified. The issue itself is not represented by any Eiffel event type, so just like the executed test case in test case triggered, it is referred to from the data object of the event. Issue verified can also link to a verification basis, indicating why the issue is considered verified, such as a successful test case execution. Test cases are rarely executed in splendid isolation, however, but in groups. There are many terms used in the industry for groups of test cases. Test campaigns, test plans, test suites, test batches. Eiffel uses test suite, but with no other attached meaning than that of an abstract grouping of test case executions for any purpose and based on any criteria. Two events are provided for this, test suite started and test suite finished. There are no triggered and cancelled events here, precisely because the test suite is considered abstract. Physical execution along with everything that can go wrong, queuing, resource shortage, and so on, are all properties of the test case executions, not the test suites. One criterion for grouping test case executions into suites is based on test execution recipe collections. One of the less mainstream concepts of Eiffel, the test execution recipe collection, warrants some explanation. This concept, represented by the test execution recipe collection created event, quite a mouthful, stems from separation of concerns. Ultimately, selecting tests for
for execution at any particular time is one concern, and executing them is another. In other words, the kind of setup the Turk event is designed for is where an orchestrator, let's call it a CI server, decides that it's time to run a test activity, but has no idea which tests to execute because that is not its concern. Instead, the CI server queries another actor, let's call it the test selector, which tests should be executed in which times of environment and with which parameters for this item under test as part of this activity. The test selector may be very sophisticated and reply based on real-time analysis of test cases that have failed recently, test cases that have not been executed for a long time, the type of changes made in the item under test, the author of those changes, the face of the moon, or any number of factors. Or it may simply return a predefined static list. It doesn't matter. What the test selector returns is a list of test execution recipes. In other words, a test execution recipe collection. Importantly, it's not a test collection. There is more information in there than just which tests execute. The recipe also details the circumstances under which to execute it. And consequently, the same test may occur any number of times, but parameterized differently. For instance, a test may need to be executed once on a Linux host and once on a Windows host. The CI server takes the test execution recipe collection, says thank you very much, and passes it on to the test executor, who executes on it. That in itself is a complex problem of resource allocation, scheduling and optimization, but we're not going to go into detail on that here. As with all other Eiffel event types, if this setup seems way too convoluted and unnecessarily complicated for you, then you are absolutely free to just forget about it. Don't use the Turk event type if it's not your cup of tea. For those of us who can't escape that level of testing complexity, however, these event types and the concepts they represent can actually help to simplify a great deal. That's all for this screencast. I hope the Eiffel test events make perfect sense to you by now. If they don't, we would love to hear from you. Reach out via Google Groups or write a GitHub issue.